call him the original, the king of natural wine in Australia, the crazy man, the wild man. This is the cleanest I've seen his wines. <laughs> Uh, welcome back to another week of Blind Wine Tastings. This week, you're going to notice a slight change up in the formula. Uh, Noah decided to get COVID, which is so just February, January of him. I don't know what he's doing at getting it now, but rest up, Noah. I do hope you get well soon. We are very fortunate to have Kerry Blandon replacing him today. Hi, I'm the new Noah, or the temporary Noah, I should say. Uh, I'm Kerry. I am related to Brennan. <laughs> Um, and I love a bit of wine, probably just as much as he does, so let's go. She does really love the company and she really knows her wine, so she's going to be fantastic to do the tastings with today. Big shout out, as always, to Sometimes Always. These wines, honestly, they get better each time we get them out. And I actually got the chance to meet them today because, again, Noah wasn't there to pick them up, so met the boys down there, they exist, they're real. It was really nice to put some names to faces. Anyway, six more wines, let's get into it. Uh, first up, we have a lovely dark colored uh, little red to start us off. So this is gonna be fun. A little bit of a uh, faded rim. So maybe a little bit of uh, barrel aging, natural settling or something like that. Got a big bit of body on there, lots of oak. Really quite grippy. Probably not so much oak as astringency. Yeah, good like sweeter fruit sort of profile. Not a great wine term, but it doesn't look particularly shiny. Like some red wines look kind of shiny. This looks kind of dull, which makes me think uh, oak. Well, that's interesting. Firstly, I really enjoy it. I think it's fantastic. You know, we're going into the winter months in the Southern Hemisphere here. This is definitely a wine that I think should be on your buy list if it's anywhere less than 50 bucks a bottle. I reckon probably playing with something a little bit spicy, quite thick skinned. That being said, closest my mind goes is Cabernet. Not totally my cup of tea. Um, I can see it definitely pairing well with some really lovely slow roasted meats. Um, so something like a really nice lamb roast um, with that bit of pepper, slightly herbaceousness kind of going on with the marinade there. Right, so obviously that's a Syrah. Pop that down, lock it in. God, I'm in good form. Um, I want eight of them. I don't want 12. 12 seems like too much. I'm just thirsty, but like eight seems like a really good number for that wine. Alrighty, let's go again. <laughs> wine two. Alrighty, looking at a little bit of a brighter wine here. Um, probably more sort of Pinot, uh, possibly Grenache. Like the, it's like the colour of the first ripe plum of the season. You know, when it's still got like a little bit of sort of like white or greenness in it, but the red's coming through on it. It smells like Gamay, Trousseau and Pinot had a love child. And for that reason, I'm just going to say it's like 60 bucks. It, it smells pretty good. It smells awesome. It's kind of got that, um, you know, savoury, sour cherry, perhaps you could call it like a natty edge thing. Got a good hunk of acid to it, nice and fresh. Really summery and a bit of texture as well, so quite minimal handling. Sour, this is cool. I wouldn't have liked this wine a year ago. I would have thought it tasted like wrong and weird, but like because I've been drinking with these guys for like a year and a half now, I, I get it. Like I kind of get why you'd want this to taste like this. It, it honestly tastes like a sour worm, like that sort of lolly that you'd have that's covered in sugar. That's definitely a winner in my books, my sort of style of wine. Probably get about two or three bottles. Um, probably looking to pay around 25 to 30 for that one. Um, I'm hoping that it's something local and delicious. Moving on, we've got, uh, could be rosé, could be orange wine. You know, on the basis of this show, it could be Pinot Gris. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's, a, it's probably a white with skin contact. Doesn't look like there's any bubble in there, so I'm not thinking pet nat on that one. It's got a really good texture to it. Um, not a whole heap of that astringent sort of skin contact, but it does feel quite heavy on the palate. Um, that's going to be super food friendly. It smells like tuna. What's going on? What the fuck are we doing with these wines? Why does this smell like tuna, Lockie? What have you done? In brine, not olive oil. You've opened a fresh packet of Maggi noodles, like chicken noodles, and you just... Honestly, it's really interesting. It's not really out there, but that, that sort of Maggi noodle thing does carry over onto the palate. Again, not in a bad way. I particularly, I like Maggi cup noodles, so. Lazy afternoon, having a picnic. Yeah, bang on, that's the wine you want for that. Considering orange wines normally retail for somewhere between sort of that 20 to $30 mark is where you find that sweet spot for it. 25 to 27 for that one. Um, I'd probably grab a half dozen or so. There's, there is a weirdness to it that I'm, I'm, it's not the good kind of weirdness that I'm personally into. I just, I'm not too sure what it's trying to be or, or, you know, what it's made from or where it comes from. I have nothing to say about this wine. It smells like tinned fish. I kind of like it. It's a little bit sour. It's a little bit weird. $30 a bottle and I want three of them. I'm confused. Alrighty, wine four. Got a nice sort of age on the nose there. It's really gutsy oak, but I feel like it's not going to translate to overpower that wine. It's just that nose that's really beautifully rich. It almost looks like really strong cordial. 
because it does have that really clear nature to it. It's not that, like, look at that compared to one number one. Like, what's going on there? They're two completely different shades. I mean, you look at the color and immediately you go, it's got to be Pinot. But you smell it and there's a level of oak here that is next level. This is the wine that Brendan brings out as like the first course of a long lunch with his in-laws, with my parents. I don't think there's too many local producers doing a wine like this, so I'm gonna go, it's probably an international little number. There's something about rosé that makes people think, oh, is this just red and white wine mixed together? And I still don't really know the answer to that, even though I've been doing this show for so long. Banging Pinot, where someone has thrown significant money at Oak, like, has knows their oak here. I would happily buy 12 just purely on the quality. On the interest factor and on the satisfaction factor, I think that's just wicked cool. I think it's gonna cost me like $110 a bottle. Uh, just, it, it screams quality at me. Wine number five, first white of the lineup. What have we got here? Textural, white, although got a little bit of a green edge, vegetal. I don't know, it wants to go towards that heavy textural edge on the nose, but it's sort of just holding back a little bit. Quite, I think that's what we would call restrained. It's got some really lovely stone fruit to it, um, but still has that little zing of acid right at the back palate to finish it off. The finish is super clean, super dry, but still has that lovely body to it as well. The white wines that I picture being served in like a beachside cafe where they sell like oysters fresh from the ocean and it's in a real, it's the bottle's so cold it's got condensation running down the outside. That white wine is like clear watery white. This isn't that. You don't, I don't think that you want to drink this by the seaside. I think you want to drink this in the hills because I think this is going to be sharded. I think it's a Chardonnay. I think it's pretty yummy. I want to say I'd probably go for around about six bottles on this. Uh, I wouldn't jump all the way at the chance to, to grab 12. I'm just not that confident that um, it'll be a wine that will reward selling. I'm um, cellaring. Yeah, it's got this like oaky sort of like nuttiness that I appreciate, but I don't really want in my wines yet. Like it's in the same way that sometimes when I taste really fancy cooking, I can be impressed that you've managed to fuse like asparagus really well with goat's curd, but at the same time, it's not something I want to eat all the time. Really well made really high quality, probably sitting around that $30 mark um, and I'd maybe take a couple home but that depends on how much space I've got in my fridge. Lucky last for the day looking at wine number six. That's definitely the biggest of the wines we're trying today. Deceivingly there is not a lot of depth to the colour, it is just quite a darker style of red. It smells like fire. It smells like a, like, uh, not like wah, 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 fire. Like, it smells like a campfire. It's that brick, tawny red colour. It's that really light, it's, it's just a really good clarity to it. And it, and the smell is unmistakably Italian. And what does that look like? What well, Slovenian oak blueberries with this sort of interplay tar and roses. Very lifted aroma. Very cool wine. Midweight, mid-tier. Goldilocks, nothing too strange either way about it. For me, I'd like a little bit more sort of like juicy, cherry, grapey flavor to come through on it. But at the same time, there is a little bit of that there. I'd just like to bump those numbers up a little bit. They're rookie numbers. It's definitely a filling kind of wine, but it does have that really light, bright acid that sort of cuts just down the side of the palate while the body sort of sits in the middle of the palate there. So super food friendly and it'll go with, yeah, those really beautiful, rich sauces. Guessing this is probably a little bit more spenny than a couple of others. I just love wines like this. A high amount of tannin, but it's not overt. The acid, piercing. You could, you could run light bulbs, potentially power cars on the amount of acid in this thing. And so for that reason, I think it's probably Barbera or a Barbera dominant blend, like a Lange Rosso blend of sorts from anywhere pricier for me. 45 bucks, but still 12 bottles in the cellar um, to enjoy. But let's see what the other folks think. All right, well, six very different wines. They are mm -hmm. like just, we haven't had quite like a visually so diverse lineup in a little while, I don't think. I was I was uh, up, down, here and there. Yeah, how did you find it first time doing your blind tastings with the today, Kerry? How'd you find it? I find it funny you brought up the fact that it's such a diverse lineup because a lot of my wine tasting experience has been with wine cellars in bottle shops and they take you through your white to your rosé to to your reds to your heaviest red mm. and so trying them out of order was actually pretty fun and funky starting out with wine number one um yeah thought i knew exactly what this was obviously it's a roll. don't ask me any more questions about it i think it's a really really good shout i think it's wrong um i thought it didn't have enough fruit character to be shiraz i was thinking more cabernet cool yeah cool um i reckon it hit that sort of 40 to 50 marks so same sort of line as you guys but how many bottles um, no, none 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 all oh, right <laughs> Right. Jeez. Okay. I just right. spoke to radio, so I saw the 
Yeah. So that not punches. bad. It's gotta it's be. Not bad. It's gotta, it's be, gotta be Shiraz. It's gotta it's be. be Barossa Shiraz. It's gotta be. No. What the fuck is that? No. What is that? I'm gonna take a random stab at maybe Montepulciano. Malvazira Nera and Negramaro. Negramaro uh, being the red variety uh, from Puglia uh, and also from Calabria. So we're talking right down the bottom part of Italy, right before you hit Sicily. Yeah. So it's basically literally the boot. Uh, on both sides. That's so annoying because every time I think something is Nagamarago Malvazira, I always guess it's Syrah. And every time I think it's Syrah, it's bloody Malganaro, <laughs> bloody Marzaniza. It's ridiculous. <laughs> One of two, speaking of mixing it up, Jesus Christ, what on earth yeah. are we talking about here? Yeah, that's cool. That's a classic natty. Yeah. Yeah, all about it. 60 bucks, 12 bottles. I was basing my guess on the market of natty wines I've seen, and I was actually thinking it sort of sits around that 25 to 30 mark. I mean, it could. That happens with natty wines I so mean, that's much. $38 a bottle is the, the thing that yeah. everyone does. Oh, it's natty? Oh, it's 38. 38. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I reckon this could be, I mean, we've seen Lucy Margot's new releases and I think potentially this is barking down that tree. How much does it cost, Locke? That's that natty wine price. It's natty Nailed wine it. price. It's from the range. Is it from Basket Range? Yes, it is. Lucy Margot's uh, new releases. That is, I got it out of control. Of course it is. Out of control, Le Melanger, uh, red blend, uh, Lucy Margot. This is a, like from pretty much, we'll call him the original, the king of natural wine in Australia, the crazy man, the wild man. This is the cleanest I've seen his wines. That is classic French level. And I think it's because he's got a couple of really good hands helping him out uh, in the winery these days. And these are looking the best they've ever looked. Wine number three. When things got weird. What's going on? I don't know, man. man. Maggi noodles. Chicken, you open up the the, Tins tuna, I thought it smelled like. Bro, yeah. this is all over the place. This, this smells like all the things that'll get you through a hurricane. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> From a sales perspective, no one wants to hear they're going to open a bottle of Maggi noodles. <laughs> so I'd phrase that as minerality, but... <laughs> good, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, she's turning her words into better things. She's just like Noah. Yeah, she is just like Noah. <laughs> bloody salespeople, man, honestly. How much all was right. it? Nice. In the slot. Okay, in the slot, yeah. Pinot yeah. Grigio. Pinot Grigio, it's gotta be. All right. I have no idea what that is. Whoa, I mean, that label cool. looks like I mean, it's moving. It's pretty trippy. <laughs> Fidelo Fidelo. Yeah. Fidelo Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc Pinot Gris. So the variety's not important here, but it's from Victoria and it's pretty cool. Esoteric and skinzy. I, I definitely wouldn't pick Fidelo. Fidelo's just typically really alcoholic. Really, really, quick. it doesn't feel alcoholic. How long do you reckon you spend on skins? How uh, many days? How many days? Yeah. With what? Vidello Chardonnay Sauvignon and Pinot Gris? Like 14? 28. Yeah, right. 28 days on skins, unoaked, unfined, unfiltered, unholy. Cool wine, not for me. Just say unholy. Yeah, that's what it says on the back. Yeah, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I've had a couple of this producer's other wines and they've all been really good quality, so. All right, wine cool. number four. Oh, dude, loved it. 12 bottles, thank you very much. Uh, the oak complexity on this, I think, is fantastic. I have no clue what it is. Yeah, it wasn't about this at all. No, 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 no. I thought it was so strange. Thought it was uh, like Shit. weird, cheap rose. Where were you at with this? I think this was the one that I sort of said was the one I'd let you buy and bring to the party. Because it's going to be spinny. Yeah, probably. I, I had $110. I was so wrong about it. I didn't I have had, it that spenny though, I had 50. I had 12 bottles too. Yeah, of course you did. <laughs> if I came over to your house and you were like, hey Henry, I've got a $110 bottle of Pinot for you to try and that's what I had, I'd be so disappointed. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I would be so upset. <laughs> what do we What do we got? I want to know, I want to know. Oh, right in the middle. We're, we're definitely up there. We're definitely like, Kerry was closest. What have we got? That looks to me like Pinot. I mean, I just, that I don't know what else of Pino. Rosé, baby! <laughs> That's amazing. Get okay. the dog up, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> we're talking about a 60, what? $65? $60, $60 uh, rosé. Yeah, so what I said yeah. was right in the sense that it's a weird rosé. It's a Pinot Sauvignon Blanc blend. Mm. Uh, and it's from Marlborough, which largely would explain the light colour mm. uh, and the style. But the amount of oak on it is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. I thought it was high-end Berg. Oh, it was like a crew, a premier crew Berg. A thousand Gods. There's a new wine producer we haven't seen on the show. Yeah. That's cool. And I, I have to say, the label, I think, sick. Yeah, the label is really cool. Kind of like concept art for like an action yeah. RPG game. It looks like it, like when someone's like, hey man, do you want to buy this NFT? And then they show you that. <laughs> yeah, we mix in different circles. <laughs> white wine, wine number five. It's hard being a white wine coming after this thing. I don't care, what did you reckon? 
I reckon it was Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah. same. I, I was I was shardy on it. It wasn't for me, like we've seen some amazing Chardonnays on the show. We've been very, very lucky. Uh, this one patently is not for me. I had three bottles, yeah. uh, six bottles actually, and 35 bucks. I had 30 bucks for two bottles. Uh, um, and that was the only one that I was confident on, so I'm going to be slightly devastated if that's <laughs> Yeah, I had one for 45. That, I, <laughs> Ooh, surely that's shot. This, this, okay, mm -hmm. this didn't show that well. Didn't show that well. It's a bit no. of a shame. How much? How much was it, Lockie? Big spender. That's 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 pricey. That's pricey. You know what do we got? It's Petit Chablis. If Noel was here, he would have guessed it was Chenin. <laughs> um, yeah. So wow. So it's, we are talking about uh, Chardonnay, 100%. Uh, it is that that lighter, uh, sort of more what we call reductive expression of yeah. Chardonnay. A little bit of oak to it, not a lot, but Petit Chablis is pricey for Petit Chablis in this country. All right, moving on to what I thought was the best wine of lineup. Cool. Really interesting. Yeah. All yeah. right. I just thought this was medium bodied red wine. Lovely. That's why it's wine of lineup. Okay. Oh, I reckon it was. A little bit bigger than what I'd probably normally go for, but it was still sort of slightly more fruit driven than texture driven, mm. um, which, yeah, is my kind of bread. I said 65 for a couple of bottles. Yeah, I reckon you're pretty on the money. I was on 45 and 12. I was all about this. Uh, 35 for six. Cool, on the money. 45. There we go. Ed Rosso, Norello Mascalese. Really? Yeah, Siri. Siri trying to help us out. <laughs> uh, yeah, 100% uh, Norello Mascalese, Edna Rosso. So, and it is it kind of interesting? Well, like, like that 100% should have been, you know, if it's high acid, it's got a small amount of structure, not the as, as much as Nebbiolo, but it can be often confused with. Cool wine, very cool wine. And to be honest, Etna Rosso commanding increasingly higher prices. So mm. for those who are speculative buyers that want to buy wines, hold them in the hope that they'll go up in price and rarity, you gotta think to be an Etna Rosso, you need to be a vineyard growing on, on the base of Mount Etna. Uh, and Mount Etna ain't big. Not I huge. mean, it's big for a, for a volcano, but not as a vineyard area. No. And it's hard to be able to buy and run vineyards on Mount Etna. It's just difficult logistically. So buying wines from from Edna, especially when they're at forty five bucks, I think I think it represents a really good bargain, especially for for those who are speculating. First time you've ever put an investment wine suggestion down on the show. Yeah, cool wine. Yeah, cool lineup as well. Actually, there's a lot of weird ones in there. I don't even know what to make this lineup. This is this is the 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 what do they call it like the stoplight lineup. Yeah, traffic light. Traffic light. This is a traffic light of wines mm. everywhere, which way or high quality. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. <laughs> and see you next week. <laughs> Thank you.